Gender-based violence is violence perpetrated against an individual because of their biological sex, gender identity, or behavior that are inconsistent with societal expectations of being a man or a woman. Trans women are individuals who are assigned male at birth but self-identify as female. Living as a trans woman in Uganda is not a bed of roses. Being a trans, first of all, in Uganda, it is, uh, I'll call it an offense. Communities don't accept trans women as women. The laws themselves don't allow trans women to live their, their preferred gender. Okuvela trans nari mani, ntingenda kuvela ne mirembo bangenda kwe ya galira mukuvela trans na ati mukomi ntegem panga lira mpita mbi ntuvi nchi nti tuvela muduka duka muyuganda tiva na ba tu kiliza. Trans women we face a wide range of violence ranging from physical, emotional to sexual violence. Many a times, my community members have come to me and told me of stories of how they were beaten just because they represent differently or identify as a transgender woman. Nzenzi jukila kolumu, bali bango vye waka, then nefuna mkwa anu gwange. Nensula ke uwe po a month, then landi rodiwe na mkwa ana, nga manyinti akwa na mwala. Ba community members, kubanzi wali nali mtu wala nga trans, mnangi nga manyi trans. Yeyandiyamo Ngabakute blo kazi nezimba mayumba. Nebanku wa msai nga guveno, negufulu mila mwenu. Nga numi ziwa, nga mpita mvulu mio wamanyi. Na inga tewali uwe nsobela kufuna. Ene hopu, sina nsobela kufuna buyambi, sina mtu uwe nsobela kuraji. Kukubila. Nebanku hata nebanzayo kupolisi, mkunzayo kupolisi. Ela nebadamu wa kuntochari, nga nebanyambula. Nebakula, kasa siloye nago batukula kuunga batuanzi. Ntibaku ambula. Sometimes, like when I enter a bar, I find so many people that recognize me immediately. And when these people see me, they start alerting people oh, we know this person, this and this, this guy. So, if you're not beaten, they might bounce you, but most of the time, trans women are beaten. They are beaten so, so badly. Violence against the trans women is often perpetrated by intimate partners, friends and family members, law enforcers, community members, and healthcare providers. Emotional violence remains a silent vice and a key threat to protection, health, and human rights. There is a lot of uh, stigma and discrimination that I also do experience or gender-based violence at the facilities where I go. I'll say I have several facilities where I'm linked and where I also refer or work from. But then uh, being trans, at these facilities, it's also some other issue, whereby even doctors themselves, there are certain doctors in these facilities that don't even want to associate with you, not even to talk to you. I will say even they hate you, they will even show it to you direct. Hmm? But then now remember you're a peer who have to refer people to these people, to these health workers that can't associate with you. Another thing is of our relation with the stigma. Because uh, this, when they come in, even when they are raped, they cannot even open up to other people. So they open up to a few of them that they, they feel they are friendly to them. So 
if at all they, they cannot they come in and they want services of, of, of maybe paper or something, they, they don't open up to stay on me that I was raped. Because you're not friendly to them. They need only the same, the friendly people to make sure they open up. So as a sex worker, as a sex worker, I have, like, I get so many, you know, we get different sexual and reproductive health illnesses. And uh, in, in, in Kampala, we have only one facility that offers services, like proct proctology services. And they only have one doctor that does that. And it's on appointment. It has to be either Wednesday or Friday. And you must, you find a big line, you know. And, you know, when I get maybe infections most of the time, I have to wait for a certain day to go and ex get that service. Yet I still have to go and work. By the virtual services we give, in relation, in relation, in relation with HIV as well, we know that very well the students are affected. And uh, those who are affected with HIV, they are prone to get even these uh, the STI, uh, STIs, including the genital warts, the anal warts. So uh, just like we know that in a, for us in a week here, we have only one day for proctology services. So this one day, you find yourself that you are overloaded. You have a lot of patients to see that very one day. Because uh, on average, if at all, you, you're having 20 patients to see. And maybe three or uh, four of them or five of them need surgery. So after surgery, you have to see these other reviews and that and that. So it is sometimes hectic for a person like me. Like even you, even when you get uh, maybe uh, any emergency or something that you're not around, they may not served. Trans women are often victims of sexual violence, which directly increases the risk of HIV acquisition and transmission. The sexual violence that is uh, happening within our communities is so alarming. The transgender women cannot even negotiate for condom use with their intimate partners, with their clients. Most of us uh, are disadvantaged. We do not work. We do not earn. So if you have a man that is able to provide for you, then it's a, yard, it's a yardstick for him to do whatever he wants with you because he's a provider. You have no say. When it comes to you know putting on a condom and it's something that is going to give you more pay for we are the sex workers within our communities then that is the way to go you negotiate with how much the person is giving you and how much you're willing to compromise with with this particular individual sometimes i go with these men they end up using me and they don't pay me most of them don't even use condoms when you go to police they put you in male cells and at police, it's worse than, it's worse. When they put you in the male cells, of course, men use you. Even police officers themselves use that. Gender-based violence remains a silent barrier to access and uptake of HIV services among transgender women in Uganda. When it comes to health facilities, there is a lot of GBV that has been reported to me and that I have witnessed personally let me give you an example now let me say if i work on a on a, on a on a facility they expect you always to be there and support trans women who come to the facility so if you're not around and then you refer someone it is a different story they won't work on that person they will start questioning them instead of giving the service because the person is trans, they can't give that service easily. They can't prioritize. Doctors also fear to associate with trans women directly. They'll even show it because they fear the people around in the facility, the, in the community, they might see them and then that will bring in question for them. At the end of the day, doctors will directly um, refuse to associate with trans women. This also builds in self-stigma within the community, within the trans women, and then they'll end up not coming to facility again. I'll give you an example. You bring in a, a trans woman to take um, PrEP or medication that can help them to prevent for them from getting HIV. But then due to whatever that happens, the, the stigma that they receive from the facility, um, the discrimination that they receive from the facility, they'll end up not coming back to the facility to seek for the services. So it is very hard. Newankuva dent walu wa muntu antigela nganzo muntu na yate. 
Sometimes wabe lao weneta ga. Ya ntege la gena kumfunire li dagari enja gala faini. Na ate wabe lao wambila nubula dobula langa. Na bobu ita agokele li okewe liwa. Nga nino kulaba ato msa oba doktor singa kuwani. Kwa yofoko paso nguwa abata deo. Nemele roo kumufuna orechi kulacha angobo rea. Mbela zanga. Nenko meke zanga sifunye ibu janja pepanga siyami da. Nemi singa ni dagari yanga. At times, you find that even in those trans-friendly health facilities, there's a lot of emotional torture. There are times when you want to get a service. Like for me, when I go to refill my art, I have specific health workers that work on me most of the time. So when they're not at the facility, sometimes it's hard for me to go and sit and wait in that line because there are so many people so when i go there and these specific health workers are not there i have to wait up to when they come the stigma is key and they are really affected in a negative way to their adherence to, to medication especially when you talk about the art people the art clans the, the, the trans who are, who are on art so uh one they, they create their self stigma they fear even to come because the last time the Mr. was preaching to me, the souls were telling me to change. So, mm -hmm. how can I go to that Mr. So, they end up not coming for appointments. They, they have missed appointments. They don't come for appointments. So, uh, that creating poor adherence. Because the, when they miss an appointment, their, their, their drugs are done and they're not of the drugs. Mm -hmm. So, they even just fall on Mr. Can you give me some drugs? Because they don't even come to the facility. They're not coming to the facility and even they continue hiding the more. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's really impacting a negative way on the adherents. I want to see police as a home, as a safe space. I want to call police when uh, my rights are violated, when I'm raped, when people have gathered, to, a gang of people have gathered to beat me. I want to look at police as a safe heaven. The law enforcers should protect us instead of beating us, um, undressing us, um, assaulting us, or even arresting us. When they arrest us, instead of putting us in cells, and also telling our inmates of who we are, in that they can rape us, that should stop, because we are all equal. But then, the police here in Uganda, not there to love it, and go around to Abalala to solve a lot of way We need to break down the barriers to gender based violence support services for transgender women in Uganda. I would like to see policies that are trans inclusive, policies that uh, protect transgender human rights and uh, trans sex workers as well. Because at the end of the day, sex work is work, and trans women are women. I'm looking at the Ministry of Health and the Uganda AIDS Commission. I want them to be able to invest in policy monitoring and evaluation to ensure that what is in the policies translates into the practice by the healthcare providers with a focus on delivering HIV and GBV services to the transgender women who fail to understand that the policy speaks about fairness and equality, but and still in their service delivery, they will discriminate a transgender woman. I need that to change. Minister of Health should make sure, you know, initially we are, they were revising the, the key, the, the KP tool, mm -hmm. because initially they, even the transgender were not on the KP tool. Mm -hmm. They should consider so the trans as, as key population and uh, they should do, make sure when they are, they are planning they should as well they should as well plan for them in the in the in the plan of the year. We want to be able to see friendly healthcare providers that provide services for the transgender community, not based on who we are, but by virtue of us being human beings and treated with dignity and equality. I wouldn't say that I would want to see trans specific health facilities, but I would love to see health workers change their attitudes towards transgender women. Welcome them, because at the end of the day, being trans is me. If I've, I've come for a service, I need a service. 
ba tutele wa basawo abatu tegera abatu manyo bulungi ngafi ba transimboli osobolo mu bulira buli kimu kyoyitamu buli kimu ekikuluma eh, nga tagenda kuvayo akitwale walala obayo gere abulire ko omuntu omulala oba okungo ba what i would like to tell the CSOs that serve transgender community is that they should continue advocating for trans rights and also engage more with the law enforcers, health workers and different entities to make sure that they protect, respect and promote the rights of transgender women. So, should continuously sensitize the transgender population about the services offered in different health facilities especially now that they, they, you know you know they just know that we have ART only and PEP no there are other services that are offered of course the continuing sensitization for the health workers CSOs should empower trans women with economic skills to reduce their vulnerability to gender based violence and HIV they need really economic empowerment, they, they don't have what to do, they are really stuck in their homes, we are just from lockdown, they don't do work, what they have, the only kind job they have is sex work. The donors themselves, we, we have to make sure they should know our priorities. Our priorities, you know, our priority one, number one is we want to give services. They should look at the services that that, are, that we are offering and they should strengthen them. Maybe if they are, they are planning to fund, they should look at the statistics, how we, have met, how we have worked out, and they should strengthen the areas, the weak areas that we have, especially now in service for provision. Initially, you know, I didn't know about the transgender and the, and the key population, and but uh, since I came to this facility, I got to know most of them, I got to learn them, I got to learn to deal, how to deal with them, and how to handle them. So, uh, at least for the seven years, I've had a lot of experience, especially with the trans people. And uh, I, interacted, I interact with them day, day by day, every other day I do that. So, uh, at least most of, actually most of the clients in Uganda know me. Even after what I go through in uh my community where I come from, all the challenges that I face, I still wake up and be me. I just want to be me. Transgender Equality Uganda invests in addressing gender-based violence, one of the key barriers to uptake of HIV services among trans women in Uganda. In addition to creating increased awareness of and access to sexual reproductive health friendly services and advocacy for legal, health and economic rights of trans women, Tewu undertakes research to inform appropriate interventions aimed at improving HIV outcomes among the trans women. If targeted measures are not implemented to reduce gender-based violence among trans women, the HIV outcome is likely to worsen and the global one national HIV target will remain a dream.